first comedian started worrying here, and what? When the club started? I gotta go now. He's continued to worry. One of the, the most it's neurotic too, men in the world. Fast. I can't. Richard Lewis, you take this mic. Oh. You, but you know, wasn't that a little abrupt? Couldn't I just have a bypass operation before I go on? It's great to be here. I don't feel well. I'm sweating. I have chest pains, but now I'm in a good mood. Chest pains are good for me, and uh, I had a good night's sleep, and yet no rest. That's why I feel very ambivalent about being here, and I'll tell you right now, I'm excited about being here. I just, Bud Friedman, I started here, and he was, he was a great guy. He started a lot of comics. Don't we know this? And I feel for you, Bud. I'm sad that uh, Sophie Tucker and King Vidor couldn't be here tonight. He was not a cheap guy. I started out there with, you know, not too much bread going on. He, you know, he had, he had a house ketchup, which wasn't too exciting for me. And, uh, and he got a little check, $12 for going on. And, and the club, the improv check, had a, a picture of Flip Wilson, a mechanical bull, waving at everybody. And then I did about 100,000 shows at the Improv, and yet I got this in Venice called the Chuckle Chapel. You got open up on it. But he's not like a mobster. He's like a menschy guy, nice guy. You know, the worst thing he ever did, he threatened to break my therapist's legs. I was upset about that. And why my shrink call me? Must she call me? I'm here with my friends, my all-star friends here. And yet, she called me, my ex-shrink. I'm out of therapy now. She called me. She, apparently, she was apologetic. She made a couple of... There you know, some kind of mistakes a couple years ago. She, she's recalling her clients from 1985. And... Although I'm not mocking her, I, I'm not going to go back. I always felt paranoid that was, she was trying to help me behind my back. I didn't like that, you know. And... Strengths are the greatest, you know. I mean, look, what a gig that is. I mean, comedy is a, it's a bitch, quite frankly. But to be a shrink, to be on a honeymoon, 4 a.m. in Paris, first time married, you get a call from clients. Hi, I'm sorry, doctor, I had to call you. Jeffrey's making that Caesar salad again. So that's frightening. But yeah, I'm not a wacko. I'm a comic, but I'm not a wacko. No, who's a wacko? I'll tell you right now. Michael Jackson. Here it is, Michael Jackson. Not a wacko. I don't mean that in the wacko sense, but yet... He's a brilliant man, and yet, did he have to spend $100,000 for the elephant man bones? I'll tell you right now. Couldn't he just, like a buck and a half stick ball bat and a collar bread? That would have been it, for a buck and a half. That's very kind of you. Whoa, oh, please. Almost there, right here. Only five more dollars for the Freudian analysts. Only five more dollars we need to make. Who else? Who else is crazy? Who, uh, I feel like I'm doing a... That was a Freudian slip. I'm a Freud... You know, I feel like I'm doing a talent show with a mental institution right here. It's the... Christmas show, okay, you're the son. You'll be Santa Claus, I'll be Scrooge, you know, that kind of thing. But I mean, like, I was, I was doing a film last year and I was uh, watching the conjugate. That's crazy. People lying an inch away from the TV screen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's wacko. I'm, I'm neurotic. That's, that's wacko to me. The whole political thing. I mean, they lied right to our faces. I mean, it was like, it's like 30 years, a guy's like in the, uh, you know, sort of maple syrup industry. And the guy would say, uh, did, you, uh, did you ever hear the name Aunt Jemima? I said, well, that rings a bell. I'm not quite sure right now. Then he talked to the lawyer, you know, that kind of thing. My mother called me, must she call me before a big gig like this, before 6 in the morning, any calls before 6 a.m. to me, I don't mean to project negativity, but to me, before 6 a.m., death in the family, death in the family, ah, it's unfair, hi, mom, how are you, she's, hi, is everything wrong, it must she be, so I already saw her New Year's Eve, I spent with the family back in Jersey, we sat around midnight, the, we watched our hopes drop, you know, at midnight, it was Christmas time, Hanukkah time, you know, and I'm not, we're, not, we're not deeply relieved. My mother, this is frightening. She has a menorah on a dimmer, which is sort of a frightening thing. <laughs> and, and we had a mistletoe, a mistletoe from hell. You know, you're supposed to kiss, and yet, one of my uncles died on Christmas about 30 years ago, so we had a black armband around the mistletoe there. So we had to kiss and weep, kiss and weep at the same time. And I went to her house, it was a frightening thing. She lives in a predominantly anxious section of town back in New Jersey, and my address was 283 Upshits Creek was the name of the address. Her house still is the same, sort of exposed brick and nerves to the house there, and I go inside, the gifts from hell. I'll tell you right now, 
she bought me, she bought me a, a dead relative's metronome, which was sort of frightening. It was going, oh, it was, it was a great thing. And I got a remote control wailing wall, which is cool. I can, I can mourn and weep in any room in the house, which Phil was very important. But hey, what's the, what's the difference? As long as you have your health. As long as you have your health, you know what I mean? Oh, must I be sunny? Stay in, stay in, stay in I'll there. stay in, I'll stay in there. I don't know where to begin. Keep with the guilt stuff. Keep with the guilt stuff. I'll keep with the guilt stuff. Where do you begin? I wish you a happy... Well, Valentine's Day is coming up now. I'll tell you right now. And tag, tag, tag team. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right, Oh, sit down. Sorry. What, what, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I, I just began. I can't. I'm not gonna tag it. It's okay. I just want to be good. I want to feel good. I want to feel good about myself. I just feel I broke up with this woman. I, I wish you well. All I know is she was an actress from hell. She, look, I'm not. I'm, she, I'm not a positive guy. She had lithium, which is a, a major drug, and yet before lithium was like, I want to go to a carnival. No, a Nick Van Bergen festival. It was like a kind of a kind of thing. You know, she was into a Baba. Hey, I wish Baba's well, you know that, but uh, I'm into therapy, and when I'm crying, she goes, we can't cry now because you're the wheat. And or, you know, I'll tell you right now, sex went into the toilet. I feel that sex should be a key to a relationship. Don't you, I know you feel that. I know you both feel that. But we were headed... Yes, 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 yes. Am I right or am I wrong, huh? That looks like... Yeah, but we... we... Big, big, big time. Yes, yes. Big time. Come yes. and to God, big thing. Yes, yes. But we were headed to an orgasm. Yes, you can applaud that. It's a great ad lib. It was a great guilt thing. Keep with the guilt thing. It's okay. I'll go with that right now. But I was headed to an orgasm custody battle, you know. She put an armrest in the middle of the bed. I wasn't frightened about. Oh, just. Uh, she said intercourse is one of her pet peeves. I wasn't thrilled about that, you know. While we're making love, she did a breast examination. I feel that was not good, you know. And birth control, hey, I'm sorry, I know it's not fair for women to use all those things, but all these contraptions from France, La Ketchis Mitt, those kind of things, you know. <laughs> but what do you, I'm paranoid, what do you use? She threw salt over her shoulders, I wasn't thrilled about that, you know. I said, well, it's, it's, I know my ebb and flow, ebb and flow. Weren't they on Sullivan in 65, the ebb and flow? I had, you know, in 1968, I, I had my, my period in 68, and yet the Aurora Borealis is over here, and you have to wear the wizard's hat on Thursday, you know that, and I know that. It's frightening. You want to feel good about yourself. And I tell you right now, sexually, I feel sex is a key. I feel that, Rob. I'm not pointing at you. It's a key. It's a key. And yet, I just feel it, I, I, it wasn't, wasn't good. It wasn't good. She was bad-mouthing me when we broke up. She said she had a fake foreplay. I wasn't thrilled about that, you know. And then I gave her an anti-climax. I wasn't happy about that, you know. Then I had to go to a penis awareness clinic, which was sort of a frightening and how do you go out? How do you date? It's frightening. I don't know what to do. I just don't, you know, I'm just, I'm a hypochondriac and I just, I don't know what to do. Even masturbation, I say to myself, can I just be friends with myself, you know? <laughs> I'm afraid I might give myself something. It's sort of a frightening thing. And, uh, but yeah, hey, aren't I going to tag you now? Don't I just want to sort of share the show now? <laughs> uh, it's great to be here. I'm going to come back soon. I got to just have some shock therapy out there and I'll be back and... But congratulations, and yet I'm doing a Will Rogers on acid impression here for no reason, but uh, it's a thrill to be here, it's a thrill to be with you guys, and uh, I think I have the tag now. How do you end? How do you end with these people here? You've got to the host. I, oh, to the host. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure Thank to be here. Know. Thank you very much. <laughs>